In my big video on Resident Evil Village, I mentioned that one of the biggest problems the game has is its obvious linearity, and I talked just a little bit about how Resident Evil 4, while being a much more linear game than the original games on PlayStation, did a really good job of hiding that linearity behind compelling combat encounters. After publishing that video, I went back and spent a few hours with RE4, and I want to expand on this topic by showing just how they did it. RE4's combat, and especially level design, are constantly distracting you from the fact that the game doesn't really have exploration built into its progression. Yes, there is exploration involved in searching for treasure, but it's not like we're in a giant mansion where you gotta figure out where to go and backtrack for a lot of puzzles and all that. And they're able to distract you by frequently presenting you with uniquely crafted combat locations and throwing in new factors for you to adapt to. RE4 eases the player into its gameplay with a one-on-one -on -one encounter to figure out the controls and camera, and then shows you the option of jumping out windows to escape houses, and now you're in an open area with just a few enemies to take out. Beyond this space, you're taking down a pretty narrow path through some more simple encounters. The game is giving you time to figure out how all this works. Then, you are put in the first iconic introductory combat zone where hordes of villagers come after you. You grab the shotgun, you're blasting enemies through the window, you knock over the ladder to stop them from coming up, you jump out the window and run across the roof, you fend off everyone in mostly open space, the chainsaw guy appears and maybe cuts off your head, you explore and find grenades, and it's over kinda quickly. The next space, and this is really important, feels totally different. Now you're on a ranch with no real clear direction where to go. Combat isn't really in your face, but you could end up in a fight if you get cornered. There's treasure and secrets all over the place, in a low pressure environment to explore, which is good for letting the player wind down after the previous stressful combat section. Then we have a boulder scene, which is stupid, let's move on. The next space contains explosive traps that you can disable, and also villagers throwing sticks of dynamite at you that you can avoid or shoot out of their hands to use against them, or you can cause them to stumble while the fuse burns down and they blow up that way. The next encounter is filled with bridges and ladders and tight spaces, just a really nicely designed room. Running around looking for two puzzle pieces, dealing with explosive guys, guys throwing hatchets at you, you're starting to use the sniper rifle. Next, we have confrontational combat in hallways, taking cover from explosive guys, making them explode, and disabling bear traps. Next is a pathway with a bunch of enemies and a chainsaw guy, and more enemies blocking the exit. Next, we go through a creepy cemetery, then we're making our way across a bridge-like walkway with some auto-platforming while enemies harass you from across the way. We're taken into a big swamp area where you can go down into the water or stay up above on the platforms. After that, there's a boss fight with Mar-a-Lago. The sun goes down, and now some of the villagers are sprouting parasites from their heads, making you hesitate about going for headshots, though I'm not sure if that has any impact on whether the parasites come out. Next is a little puzzle area where you gotta lower the boxes into the water by shooting the chains, then you're ambushed on both sides and gotta fight your way out. And now we've got another boss fight, already! Man, this game just keeps it moving. We work our way back up the bridge walkway, back to the cemetery, where we are confronted by deadly zombie dogs that kick your ass. We have a cute little color puzzle that leads us to the exit of the church, and we make our way out to see hordes of villagers that we can take out by shooting a carriage and sending it in flames. We backtrack through the village, all these enemies coming at us, traps all over the place, as we protect the president's daughter and then use her to reach the alternate exit of the ranch area. The weather is changing, the world is dark, and it's raining. Next, we're trapped in a cabin and have to fight off waves of villagers breaking through the windows and doors. It's an intense fight. Next, there's a fork in the road. We can take one of two paths to get where we need to go. You can go through this gauntlet area and fight chainsaw ladies. Or you can take the path with another boss that you can avoid with environmental traps and quickly shooting the locks on the doors as you look for the key to unlock the door at the end. As the world opens up into this gorgeous landscape, we take the lift down to the lower levels while villagers are also riding lifts and throwing axes at you. At the bottom, we have another boss fight. Isn't that wild? In two hours, we've already gotten three big fights. We take the eyeball back up the lift and open the gate. Now there's a truck barreling towards us, running over villagers, and we gotta shoot the driver and knock the truck off the road. Then we approach the castle, and it's certainly a grand design. 
We're suddenly dealing with cultists, activating catapults, sending exploding boulders our way. We target red barrels to disable them and snipe some of the cultists. Now we've got a cultist with a metal helmet, keeping us from shooting him in the head. After we blow the castle gate open with a cannon, we enter the castle. Now we're surrounded by quick-footed cultists charging at us, cultist leaders swinging maces. Then more enemies barging out of doors and swarming us. We get confronted by shielded cultists that can suck up your ammo. Then we're in a dungeon dealing with this gladiator guy that swings his wolverine claws wildly and you gotta shoot him in the back. He's blind so you can lure him around by shooting bells and then he turns his back to you for a free shot. Then there's cultists coming at us that we can burn with environmental traps. Next we're introduced to cultists that shoot arrows at us. Then we've got this giant room with all kinds of different cultist types and we're just blasting our way through, getting surrounded. Ashley gets taken so we have to set her free. We set Ashley on the pressure switch and we stand on the other one to raise up a crank in the middle of the combat room. Okay, okay, let's stop. Do you see what I'm saying here? Resident Evil 4, under the brilliant direction of Shinji Mikami, director of the original game, is constantly introducing us to new, fresh combat encounters. That's how you make players forget that your game is basically linear. Over and over, room after room, Resident Evil 4 finds a new way to engage the player, with new enemy types, unique enemy placement, smart level design, navigational puzzles. Every single encounter, for hours, is a special one. And now that we've established that, let's see how Resident Evil Village, under director Morimasa Sato, compares to RE4. Village is regularly talked about for its supposed similarities to RE4, but those similarities are entirely superficial, because we're just talking about the game having a merchant, and hunting for treasure, and enemies dropping stuff when you kill them. Yeah, you're in a village, RE4 is in a village. But Resident Evil Village has absolutely no influence from RE4 in terms of design. The first combat zones dump you right into barricade swarm sections with no setup to get accustomed to the gameplay or controls. And then for the next several hours we get long periods of wandering around, watching cutscenes, and small combat encounters that all feel identical. There's no consideration paid to the design of this world in terms of enemy encounters. Whereas in RE4, this room felt totally different from this room, which felt totally different from this room. Village just keeps pushing forward with spaces that lead to the same style of enemy engagement. There isn't any thought to how you're gonna navigate the space as enemies come at you. All the spaces basically feel the same, and they're really simple. And the game rarely throws more than three or four enemies at you at once anyway, so it doesn't really matter what you do. Really, this was shocking to me, and became even more shocking when I went back to play RE4 after playing Village. It's so obvious that they flat out did not care about designing their game to be engaging and interesting. All that matters is that it looks nice and keeps you lulled into a sense of general satisfaction so you can play all the way through it and think it was good. Village's design is so obviously made to be able to coast through the entire experience without thinking, but this aspect in particular, the lack of unique spaces and combat encounters, screams of laziness because it's time consuming to have to design lots of different areas to keep your gameplay feeling fresh. They'd rather just impress you with the presentation. And I didn't even go into Village wanting a bunch of different combat encounters. I would rather have a more puzzle-like exploration-based game like the classic Resident Evils, where you're avoiding enemies and being conservative with your resources, but Village couldn't even get that right because of the inventory and the linear map design. If Village had classic Resident Evil map design, it wouldn't need the combat encounters to distract from its linearity. So go back and play RE4 again and take a moment to appreciate the uniqueness of every encounter and how the game is always throwing something new at you. Thanks for watching.